take us back to the beginning? How did you discover your passion for storytelling and the arts? Oh, well, I think it started very, very early. I was living in France at the time, but um, I come from a bilingual family. So we would watch, you know, at the time it was different. We were not allowed to watch television. <laughs> but but we still managed to, you know, I had a neighbor in the, in the village. We lived in a village uh, about, you know, 30 kilometers from, um, uh, 20 miles from Paris. And I, I would sneak into my neighbor's uh in my neighbor's house and watch tv and you know we usually get a a scolding but eventually you know my parents got got a tv and i started watching i remember very clearly one day i watched this extraordinary movie by cocteau uh, beauty and the beast it was the original beauty and the beast uh, uh 1936 version by cocteau with uh that was truly one of the most extraordinary films i'd ever seen and it's a very sort of surrealistic masterpiece it's 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 the sort of origin story that then disney took it was based on the actual um you know fables and uh and then i carried on this passion for for the screen i would you know spend a lot of time uh, with my grandparents in london or in england and uh there would watch you know great classics of of uh tv usually i would go to for christmas or holidays so it was like a uh, a huge number of films were being shown for Christmas. It was like the famous Christmas movie. Um, there were sort of marathons of some of the greatest classics of of the yeah. British and 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 US uh, US uh, TV. You know, uh, uh, US uh, films. Sorry. So I I started you know really really liking, it. and I went to the theater. My dad took me to the cinema, and he was sort of very. He was very interested in different filmmakers. So I would, you know, I, in my early years, I would watch Bergman, Akira Kurosawa, mm. um, uh, especially this this movie that really struck me called Devsu Zala, like Akira Kurosawa, and then Seven Samurai. And then I went on to, to develop this incredible passion. And I sort of had a gift of, of disguise. I love to disguise myself and invent stories. I I think it came from there, from my own imagination, because I love to read as well, you know. Yeah, and you've had so much success throughout your career. When you look back, is there a particular moment that stands out to you? Well, I think, you know, the decision I made, I mean, you know, there are many that stand out, but, you know, the decision I made uh, as an actor to suddenly leave everything and move to New York, uh, I was going to move to London, but, you know, I, I decided I was working as a as a French actor, but never really felt comfortable in my sort of mother tongue, if I can say. Mm. I was always raised bilingually, so I thought I'm going to move to London, then went to New York on a whim and thought this is where I need to be. So I, I got my green card, stayed and started working. So I think that decision was really one of the most important decisions I made in my life because very soon afterwards I I was starring in a in a huge production of Oscar Wilde's uh, Salome uh, with Al Pacino you know so that was a very marking debut for me on the stage um it was really extraordinary I, I can't believe how how gutsy I was as a kid <laughs> I would literally it was just when I arrived in New York I would be like calling major agents sending my photos and I get calls and you know I, I'd, I'd done a few American uh, TV series in Paris and you know I remember this casting director called Hank McCann said you know when you're in, in if you come to the States call me and I called him and I was like hey Hank I'm here <laughs> where, where can I meet agents and I was so brazen and the same with Bonnie Timmerman you know I, a friend of mine said if you go to New York call Bonnie she was the biggest casting director at the time you know and I called Bonnie. I was like, hi, Bonnie, I'm Sebastian. Uh, you know, would love to meet you. <laughs> you know, you never do that. I got her personal number. She called my friend in Paris and was like, oh, yeah, come see me. And I got cast in Last of the Mohicans. So these are sort of moments in my life, you know, where I thought to myself, this is the place I need to be in. It, it's it, I'm meant to be here. Yeah. And then I started my my uh, my. Um, career my american career I, I had a french career then but you know i started my american career and uh yeah it's it you know did a lot of theater in new york then started doing more and more tv moved to la and things got even more got better as i, I as i got to la and yeah there were many marking moments in my career you know uh, 
the first time I did a TV series, you know, uh, on this TV series in 1997. I'm, I'm talking a lot but in 1997 I did a TV series that starred Heath Ledger, Vera Farmiga, uh, Kerry Russell, myself, uh, Lisa Zane and some others you know and this was Heath's first sort of American gig he was 18 and mm -hmm. you know and then there were all these amazing actors in it and and yeah that started this sort of um, regularity in in employment you know and uh, up to now in 1923 with you know Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. Yeah. Who could ask for more? You know these were my absolute heroes and crushes. You know, uh, talking about Helen Mirren. You know I, when I watched Excalibur. You know when and Mosquito Coast with Harrison Ford, who was for me the embodiment of adventure and 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 the quintessential actor to me. So it's quite a dream. You know the the journey has been worth um the effort you know definitely yeah 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 what, what was a bigger transition for you going from the French market to the American market or going from the stage to the screen do you know it's funny because the transition from French market to American market was not such a transition because I was mm. welcomed with such open arms and positivity and there's a very different, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, French actors are blasé and judgmental, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of generalizing, you know, it was a, just a difference, different approach. Uh, there is, there was this extraordinary thankfulness, this, this gratitude about working and, and, uh, and, and incredible support between actors. When I, when I got to New York and I started, you know, doing, a lot of plays and I loved the energy and the, you know it was it, it, it's kind of a dog eat dog world in New York but you know you have to work your ass off for not that much money and you you, you yes. only rehearse for four weeks to do a play whereas in France you two to three months sometimes to do a play so you, there is this urgency and this 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 sort of it's true I, I, I truly arrived in the new world uh, you know in a way because there was this sort of completely adventurous approach to acting and, and truly exciting, you know, yeah. um, exciting approach to acting in the arts. And uh, yeah, it, it, that transition was kind of seamless because I, I, I embraced it with all my heart. The, the transition from stage to screen, yeah, I mean, there are certain things you learn, you know, uh, you know, uh, little by little as you work, uh, as an actor on screen I'm still learning you know it's it's a it's a forever learning process yeah. which I find really fascinating you know I'm now at a point where I'm I'm an elder actor I'm uh, I'm still learning but I'm also have this baggage of experience you know I was listening to who is it the, this great actor uh, actually I can't remember who it was but who was saying basically what makes you a better actor is your life experience yeah uh, and it's absolutely true uh, there is that and of course you know the the skill that you acquire if you're curious enough to um, when you're working on set you know observing the lens the size of the lens so you know exactly if you're on a wide shot you, mm. you it's, it's not a sort of minutiae of acting yeah. and then you have a close-up and then you can do less and it's just a fascinating medium Say earlier, one of the stars of 1923, and you're no stranger to playing the villain, but often <laughs> there's a supernatural element to those characters, which I imagine allows you to step outside of reality. But this role is very much grounded in history. Were there any trepidations about heading into this project, just given the subject matter and your character story arc? Yes, very much so. You know, when I started reading the scripts, um, we're dealing with something that truly happened that was actually yeah. also unfortunately newsworthy because we'd heard about the residential schools in Canada and the discovery of mass graves of children. So we are, you know, I, I, I give Taylor Sheridan an, an immense amount of credit for, for always talking about, you know, the, the American Indian call, you know, cause or, and, and the horrors that happened uh, in the past. I mean, you know, he talks about reservations on Yellowstone um, in 1883. You know, there's, you know, the sort of uh, uh, the, the the push towards the West and encroaching on on the territories. 
And now we're talking about the very, very painful history of residential schools <laughs> uh, with, you know, American Indians who were taken away from their families and put in these schools to sort of, uh, you know, as they say in the script, get the Indian out of them. And that, you know, it's a sort of offshoot of colonization, but in, in, we're talking about religion as, as a weapon to sort of dehumanize a whole strata of society. And, you know, the indigenous Americans, the people who were there first, you know. So, yeah, recreating that painful history is, is painful, is I think extremely triggering for people who are going to watch it, who experienced it. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, I'm, I'm, I play a perpetrator. And it was uh, when I read the script, I, I, I hesitated at first, I have to admit, but then thought to myself, this is a necessary uh, moment in history to talk about. People need to know about these moments of history, especially now we're in a, a time where people are sort of uh, trying to prevent history from being taught. You know, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the great thing about films and documentaries is that we can actually take these moments in history and release them to an even wider public because people, you know, most people don't really read or, or inform themselves. Uh, and I think it's our duty. I think it was extremely brave of Taylor Sheridan to talk about it. You know, yeah. nobody really talks about it in a sort of fictional series, you know, and but we're talking about something that truly happened that that is an important um, dark chapter of our history. And we need to be cognizant of, of the fact that this truly happened in the name of religion, in the name of state building. And uh, yeah, so I felt a, a huge responsibility as an actor to, to, to do my job properly, to inform myself properly, and to work with the actors who I was working with, who were uh, indigenous, American Indian, uh, indigenous, um, so that we could have, you know, uh, you know, safe words together, because you know we're dealing yeah. with 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 huge brutality, and uh, yeah, and I was t talking about this uh, in, in in some other uh, interviews. Uh, you know, I I before one scene, you know, uh, Moses brings plenty, who's our consultant, who plays, who's in Yellowstone, and who's our consultant. You know. Uh, American Indian consultant on the series, you know, I, I just had to turn to him and say, you know, we're, we're about to recreate a, I had to turn to the whole crew and, and apologize before and apologize to him because mm -hmm. there was a room full of, of young uh, women, you know, and we were going to recreate something very difficult. And, you know, I, I felt it was my duty to apologize before doing the scene to sort of clear the air because this was going to be something um, pretty horrific that we were going to transcribe on screen so yeah i mean yeah it's a, it's a huge responsibility as is as it is with any any film that recreates uh, a dark chapter in any history really yeah once you start receiving those first couple of scripts and you start filming as an actor how do you get into that mindset and create the space for yourself to dive into those darker themes and moments and i imagine that you're filming for an extensive period of time, how are you able to decompress and to kind of separate yourself in between takes? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. It, the day we shot a, a specific scene, it was, you know, you. For my process is to, is to, is to have a, an, a huge amount of focus, for me focusing and trying to basically, because you know, what you need to know is that, you know, a film set is like a little village and yeah. There were people milling about, doing their work incredibly professionally, especially on this, on this series where you have really the top people in in their craft. You know, working on such a film, you have to sort of retreat in a space where you, without being, you know, without being a horrible person, but you have to retreat in a space where you focus on the scene, and it takes an inordinate amount of actually energy to channel such violence and, and 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 feeling for revenge that you yeah it, it it takes it takes so much energy and focus to stay within the character um yeah so you know you and especially when you're doing your first scene on the first day of shooting you know it brings added 
uh, sort of uh, a nervousness and tremor about you know what what is going to happen once you've achieved the scene and uh, the way you want it and you feel that you've been as honest as you can and 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 uh, with your scene partner and that the scene has been achieved there is a, a sort of release uh, <laughs> there's this yeah. feeling of um at the end of the day you have sort of a feeling that uh, the massive the, you know the huge weight is off your shoulders so that you can actually then work on the next scenes with a little more liberty of spirit let's say uh, nevertheless when you are doing those kind of scenes it's it does take a slight toll on you you do end the day feeling spent and mm -hmm. uh but you you know at the same time uh i remember working with you know amina nieves and lena robinson these two wonderful young actresses and uh, you know feeling so uh, fortunate that i could work with such truthful and powerful actresses and you know at the end of the day we are actors and we we celebrated you know the the work that we did and i thought that was also you know after doing something so painful so triggering for them um it was beautiful to to embrace each other and uh, mm. and we we all have a very close knit relationship with with all these actors actually as a result you know working with such extraordinary actors as jennifer ely and and of course you know harrison and, and helen but you know i i'm i'm more in the context of the residential schools yeah uh yeah it, ha it it's been extraordinarily full fulfilling and you know i learned a lot about it during my research too and uh you know this is where we are the sort of repositories of 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 history at times and i find that that's what i find extraordinary in our creative art you know is that we can actually any movie that's talked about dark chapters of our history you know whether it's the tulsa massacre that nobody knew about until watchmen yeah kind of re you know uh, it resurfaced you know uh, and you know uh, schindler's list or movies about the holocaust or you know or or uh, dances with wolves or you know they sort of recreate periods of history that we might not know about as much anymore and this is a perfect example because it's a very popular series you know due to the yellowstone um world yeah and i think i think people you know people have difficulty in watching it i understand but i think it's important to be challenged you know it's Definitely. important to be challenged and to be informed uh uh with in such an age of disinformation it, it, you know it's mm -hmm. it's it's time to be informed inform yourselves um you know read a little more <laughs> <laughs> hey, important to read <laughs> Great answer. You know, you were also a fan of Taylor's before jumping onto this project. What was it like getting to collaborate with him and what impact has he had on the way that you've approached your work since and specifically with this character? Yes, I've been a fan of Taylor Sheridan since the moment I saw Sicario. Yeah. Uh, I'm an avid reader and I, I'm a writer myself. And when I saw that film, I thought to myself, who wrote this absolute, uh, absolutely brilliant script, flawless script? I mean, beautifully directed of course and acted but the writing you know the it's the origin of any great film is the writing that you know you get a great script most of the time you're going to have a great movie and I thought to myself who is this guy Taylor Sheridan Taylor Sheridan and then I watched Helen High Water and I thought my god this guy is truly amazing then I went to see his film that he directed Wind River and wrote of course and then I started watching Yellowstone and I thought to myself, God, I, I need to work with this guy. You know, this man it, it knows how to write as a writer, but he knows how to write for actors. It's, it's, mm. It seems so seamless. Uh, he, it's like he, he throws the right words in every one of his characters. It's extraordinary. It's like, he's like a, uh, a wordsmith, a magician of words, you know. And uh, then I watched 1883 and I thought, and when I heard about 1923, I thought to myself, I need... I willed myself onto that show. I auditioned for another character. It didn't work out. And then Father Renault came along and I, I connected with the character. It seems strange to connect with such a, such a cruel character, but I did connect with the character. 
uh, sometimes you ident I, I didn't identify, but I connected with the characters. Mm -hmm. It felt right. And uh, yeah, and I, it, I you know, we, I was proved right and I willed myself onto the Taylor Sheridan universe. And it has really, uh, it has, yeah, it, ha it, 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 you know, anytime you're on a new project of such quality, it does change you. Um, the words, you know, that I, I remember doing some of these scenes and they're so fine tuned. The words are so, every word is important, every syllable. Yeah, it makes you actually become even more truthful to, to sort of try and, and, and present the story in the most honest way. So in that respect, it did change me to, to, to bring it down to the essence of the word, you know. Um, what I love in, with Taylor Sheridan and the way we shoot is, is the most beautiful about a scene is the silences. Mm. And uh, he, he gives you room for silence, for moments, for beats, where it all ends up in the eyes. But that's also part of his writing because he, he gives you that space. And um, that's something I truly, truly appreciate. We had, I was working on a scene with this wonderful actor, Jamie McShane, and it was just a scene where we were gauging each other and the words were sparse, but it was all about the silences. And that's great writing yeah. too as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I, I learned. Because sometimes you go on certain shows, you know, that are a little more commercial and people are like, could, could you do, could, could you go a little faster? You know, and, and it's frustrating. The silences in life are, are sometimes the most interesting moments that you're going to see.